Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Finally, the rest of the world is paying attention. All of you, my fellow XRP holders here in the community, we've known for years about the improper behaviors from a government agency, the SEC, as it pertains specifically to ETH and the Ethereum Foundation and all the favoritism. It's ETHgate. It's a real thing. It's not some sort of wacky conspiracy theory. It's just the real world fact that there was prefer preferential treatment given to a particular cryptocurrency and foundation surrounding it uh, that wasn't given to others. And it was, in fact, as a result, unfair. It was an unreasonable playing field. It just, it is what it is. It's a real fact. It's a real thing. We've been screaming about it for years and we were right. Finally, we've been seeing increased attention uh, coming to this. And it comes right in line with huge news that broke Earlier today, uh, here's a headline from Cointelegraph, former Ethereum advisor files $9.6 billion lawsuit against U.S. government. Well, how about that? Now, uh, we knew that something was likely to be coming because Stephen Naryoff, who is the one who uh, had attorneys on his behalf file this, he had been saying, yes, stuff's moving forward. And it takes a while to get your ducks in a row. I can understand that. So it, it has finally come to pass. This has filed just gigantic news. And part of what is going on here, absolutely, is ETHgate. So let's break down the latest and what's going on here. But again, I just want to say it one more time. We were right. This isn't Crazyville stuff. This is real life. Like, there's real evidence. Uh, now, as it pertains specifically to the allegations that uh, Stephen Naryoff is putting forth uh, towards the government, uh, I can't say anything definitively uh, about what may be true and what might not be true, if anything. Uh, but I will say that Stephen Naryoff, who was tied to Ethereum from the earliest of days, arrested in 2019 on serious charges that would have put him behind bars for decades. After several years, those charges, they were just dropped because Stephen Naryoff was fighting back and refusing to acquiesce. And eventually, since the government didn't apparently have anything on him, they had to stop. And that, that's because he had the fighting attitude against that. But if he hadn't, who knows what the hell would have went down here. But he was, he was, he was risking it all. And, and so the claims here are that the government charged him and they knew that there was nothing there. And they had a reason for doing this, even though there was nothing there. That is, if, if that's true, and again, I can't speak definitively, but if that's true, that is disgusting. That is not what life should look like, uh, you know, unless, I mean, maybe you expect that if you're under some sort of dictatorship or in some sort of banana republic. In the United States, I don't think so. And the fact that, there was a, you know, he was arrested in four years past, and, and then it's, it's, it's dropped? That's highly suspicious. Where there's smoke, there's typically fire, right? I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Now, to set the table a little bit, here's a headline from Coindesk. This is from May 15th of last year, 2023. U.S. prosecutors drop extortion charges against early advisor to Ethereum Network. Criminal extortion charges against Stephen Naryoff and an early advisor to the Ethereum network were dismissed by a New York judge on May 5th, ending a three-and-a-half-year legal battle that included explosive allegations he made against U.S. investigators. The dismissal, entered by U.S. District Court Judge Margot Brody, Chief Judge of the Eastern District of New York, or EDNY for short, comes six weeks after federal prosecutors moved to drop their case against Naryoff, admitting in a March 20th court filing that they had obtained material exculpatory evidence and were otherwise unable to prove the charges in the indictment beyond a reasonable doubt. And so, folks, that's, that's at the heart of this. All sorts of serious allegations made against Mr. Naryoff uh, to, to, the, to a degree that would have put him behind bars for potentially decades. And the assertion is that that was actually all just fabricated. And again, tied in with all of this is ETHgate and the favoritism therein. It's all part of this. And we've been screaming this for years. And you'll see as I go through this video, I'll highlight this, but this is getting some serious mainstream media attention, as it should. Peace continues. 
Naryoff and his employee, Michael Haledi, were initially accused of extorting an unnamed Seattle-based crypto startup that Naryoff had been hired to guide through its initial coin offering in 2017. Prosecutors said the pair made threats to destroy the company if they were not paid millions of dollars. Haledi pleaded guilty to extortion in April 2021 and faces a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. He's not been sentenced yet. Naryoff, however, has maintained his innocence from the beginning. In their motion to dismiss filed in February, Naryoff's lawyers said their client was the victim of an elaborate setup by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, which they say knowingly pursued false charges against Naryoff in order to get him to turn over incriminating evidence on his contacts in the crypto industry. The allegations made in Naryoff's motion to dismiss are explosive. Now, you may recall that we got word this past September uh, that uh, John Deaton had some, some news. Uh, part of the news uh, was that uh, he, he had some information from Stephen Naryoff. So this is before a lot of that information had come to light. But it was being discussed even back in September of last year. And... Um, as is indicated on the screen here, there was it was made publicly known that uh, he was going to be uh, live streaming with Stephen Naryoff, which did happen about three months later. It occurred. Here's the video on the screen right here. This is on Mar uh, sorry December nineteenth, two thousand twenty three, and I'm sure many of you listening saw this. Uh, it was a little over an hour live stream on John Deaton's Crypto Law uh, TV YouTube channel, and I was there when this thing was live, and it, I've never seen anything like this, folks. There were over 90,000 people listening simultaneously. 90,000 people listening live. I've never firsthand seen anything like that. Ever. Not even close to that. 90,000 freaking people. Over, I think it might have got up to like 93,000, something like that. I, I, was, I was actually posting about it at the time. And it was just climbing so quickly. Like Every minute, there were thousands of new people jumping on board. And here you can see 570,430 views as of now staggering numbers that is incredible so a lot of interest around this and now as you'll well I'll get to more of this a little bit but lots of mainstream media interest uh coming as a result of uh what was filed today and so i was sharing that post on december 19th about at the time anyway that i posted this one 82,000 people were watching but it did get up to like 93,000 or so and attorney bill morgan reposted that and wrote incredible claim at the end that the infamous Dow hack was an inside job by the Ethereum Foundation. And so I would say that was one of the biggest, if not the biggest bombshell that Stephen Naryoff dropped during that stream with attorney John Deaton. Um, he's claiming that the $55 million hack that, you know, it's Coindesk wrote here, almost brought down Ethereum, was actually an inside job. And it was the ETH folks that did it. But this is the headline from September 17th, 2020. And I don't need to read the article. I just wanted to remind you, there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of accusations. And so for the people that brushed off us crazy XRP holders over the last few years, uh, no, you done messed up and you should have paid more attention and you should have taken this seriously. But here's the headline, the $55 million hack that almost brought Ethereum down. And by the way, I in, in, in doing some preparation for this video, I came across this article. I'm not going to read this one either. I just wanted to mention it because um, it's from CC and it's titled, Ethereum insiders believe the Dow hack was an inside job, claims source. So the first I'd heard of this was along with the rest of you guys in December with that, with John Deaton, that, that, uh, that live stream with Stephen Nariop. That's the first I'd heard of this. But then in, in, in uh, doing some Google search and in preparing for this video, I came across this article talking about the, uh, the hack being an inside job. And this was over three years ago. So I read the article and for the sake of time, I won't read it here, but suffice it to say, there was an individual who wanted to not be uh, tracked at all and like encrypted the communication when he spoke with the author of this thing and uh, just he made all allegations it seems like are in line with what Stephen Naryoff was sharing so I don't know if this was Stephen Naryoff I can't say but if it's not then there are other there's at least one other person that was trying to get the word out that the uh th th that hack that 55 million dollar hack actually was an inside job that I found interesting I've not seen this before I don't know if any of you knew about that I just happened upon it uh, but, you know, in reading the articles from December when this um, when this allegation dropped from Stephen Naryoff, which is a massive allegation, I didn't see any sort of indication that anybody had ever talked about this in the past. So when I came across this, I was very surprised, to say the least here. So then you get to this. Uh, this is the latest. 
From Cointelegraph, former Ethereum advisor files $9.6 billion lawsuit against U.S. government. Stephen Naryoff, an early advisor to the Ethereum network, has filed a lawsuit against the United States government for false charges and mistreatment by federal agents between 2019 and 2023. Naryoff, known for publicly accusing Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin of fraud, filed a Federal Tort Claims Act, FTCA, lawsuit suing the U.S., for $9.6 billion in damages for the extortion case brought against him in 2019. The legal battle lasted for about four years, with the U.S. government eventually dismissing the lawsuit in May 2023. Folks, can you imagine living with that over your head? Like, you might actually go to... You might actually go to prison for, like, decades. And then, like... <laughs> if if, if the, uh, the, the charges are indeed completely fabricated just completely made up and then to, to have that in conjunction just knowing that this is like you're actually being targeted by your government that would feel terrible so again and i can't say definitively anything i'm just sharing with you what's being reported publicly but it doesn't pass the smell test you know the, the fact that several years making these serious claims against him, and then the government's like, "Oops, just kidding. We're not going to move forward with this." That doesn't pass the smell test, does it? That is curious. Let's say. Anyway, peace continues. The legal battle lasted for about four years, with the U.S. government eventually dismissing the lawsuit in May 2023. According to the new SF95 filing posted by Fox Business journalist Eleanor Terrett, Naryoff sued the federal government based on claims that its agents were aware of the baseless nature of the charges. He also argued that some agents engaged in harassment and intimidation tactics, including fabrication of evidence, in order to prosecute him for extortion. Naryoff's legal team believes that damages caused to Naryoff's reputation and businesses are significant enough to file a lawsuit against the U.S. government. The filing reads, and this is a quote, as a direct and proximate result of the wrongful conduct of federal agents and or officers, Mr. Naryoff's well-being, personal life, and career were, were irreparably harmed. He incurred significant legal fees to defend himself while simultaneously losing income as a result of becoming a feared pariah in the crypto community. End quote. End quote. Uh, according to Tarrant, Naryoff hired prominent lawyer Alan Dershowitz as a consultant on the case who believes the case is unusual. Naryoff is a serial entrepreneur, attorney, inventor of multiple international patents and founder of the blockchain consulting firm Alchemist. He is also a blockchain pioneer, known for his early involvement in projects like Ethereum in 2015. Naryoff was arrested by the Federal Bureau of Investigation alongside his alchemist associate Michael Haledi in September 2019. Both Naryoff and Haledi were charged with extortion, with authorities arguing that they threatened to destroy a cryptocurrency startup if they were not paid millions of dollars in Ether. An early player in the cryptocurrency scene, Naryoff has been at the center of diverse controversies and legal battles. The former Ethereum advisor repeatedly attacked Ethereum in the past, making serious allegations against founders Buterin, Joe Lubin, as well as the Ethereum Foundation. Naryoff's allegations included various aspects of Ethereum's development and operations, including fraudulent initial coin offerings, personal misconduct, and collusion with corrupt officials. One of Naryoff's claims is that Ethereum received preferential treatment from regulators, which is referred to as ETHgate, in the community. Ding, 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 yes, unquestionably, that absolutely provably is the case. Because you can see it. You can see the behavior. You can see it's favorable for everyone involved in ETH. And that's just, they're just facts. That's that. That's not a conspiracy. Those are, those are facts. That's real. Um, and so uh, word's been spreading. I also wanted to mention this. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of James O'Keefe before. 2.3 million followers on social media platform X. I'd say he's pretty damn famous at this point. He was a founder of Project Veritas, and there was a falling out at some point last year. I'm not going to get into that whole thing. That's not the purpose of a video like this, or even within the wheelhouse of what my channel discusses. I just thought I'd mention that in case the name sounds familiar, like James O'Keefe. Okay. Yeah, he's the Project Veritas guy. Um, no longer with Project Veritas, and uh, ended up starting a, which he started, by the way, forever ago, 
Probably, like, how long has that been? Probably like 15, 20 years ago. But anyway, there's a falling out, and then he created O'Keefe Media Group, or OMG for short, which I think is kind of funny, and so he's running that now. And they're basically doing the same thing. It's whistleblower stuff. And so um, I'm not, he had this long post, it's on your screen. I'm not going to read the whole thing just for the purposes of time. If you want to pause as I'm scrolling down, you can. This was actually from uh, April 3rd. And, um, and so he's been covering what's going on here. And he's going to continue to. In fact, there's going to be a, a stream on X. I think, think tomorrow he's going to be hosting. Um, but the word's getting out. So I just thought I'd highlight this because this post from April 3rd covering this stuff, and this is before the news today dropping about the lawsuit, got 1.6 million views. Like, th this is mainstream now, folks. It all, you know, the news started to get out thanks to our XRP community. It's huge. And it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this unfolds here. But for months and months and months on end, Stephen Arioff was promising, no, there's more to come. I think it just took some time to put this all together because now here we are in April of 2024. Uh, and, you know, I say fair enough. I don't know what that process is like. I've never had to deal with something like that in my life. I, I hopefully never will. <laughs> Can't imagine that. Um, man, imagine the amount of stress he must have gone through and all that. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens here. But um, if this is all true, he, he certainly deserves something, don't you think? And this is all intertwined, which is why one of the first things I said in this video was, we were right. In the XRP community, there's something to this. Now, again, as far as these specific claims, we'll see what they have to say, but um, none of this sounds crazy to me. I'll say that. I feel comfortable saying that. I want to see more of, of what the actual arguments are, whatever can be made public, but um, it's certainly highly suspicious. I think it's fair to say that at, at a bare minimum. And look at all the other craziness that's been happening. Yeah. This is the, the claims themselves sound believable. I, that's about as far as I can go, but they sound believable. So we'll see what happens. But wow, what a crazy freaking ride. And it's only going to get more ridiculous, apparently. <laughs> and so there he is on your screen right there, Stephen Arioff. So I'll keep you guys posted as things develop, but man, massive news dropping today. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.